now we have another um, voice of faith, and he's going to talk to us, and he's going to help us to really navigate where we are in this season. But first of all, he's going to tell you a little bit about who he is, and we are now with Pastor John Miller. How are you tonight? Wonderful. I am wonderful, too. God is good, right? He sure is, Dr. Deborah. We are not about fear, but we are about faith. Is that yes, right? Yes, we are. Amen. Now, great man of God, you call yourself pastor. I call you apostle because you're doing great works all over the world. I mean, not just here in Atlanta, but all over the world. You're doing amazing work. And I want you to talk a little bit about that work. Well, I'm actually the bishop of the Argentine churches, but don't call me bishop, please. <laughs> I'm going to call you apostle, I'm, like the apostle Paul. <laughs> I'm just playing John, and in a nutshell, I'm just a, no less, no more than a reed shaking in the wilderness. Praise God. Amen. And uh, you asked me to tell just a little bit. When I was 16 years old, uh, on my birthday, I turned off my car that I had at that and all I can say is God came into the car, talked to me in an audible voice to me, told me he had called me from my mother's womb, <clears throat> told me what I would do in my life, what I would be, what I would do in Argentina, that I would be the head of the work that my father started. And I've had the privilege in uh, decades and decades of missionary work to have been in uh, 12 revivals and moves of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I've truly been privileged. And uh, I'm now a pastor here in Atlanta of a small flock. And uh, in Argentina, we've built uh, several dozen churches yes. and yes. Bible schools and seminaries, seven radio stations. And... Uh, and it keeps me quite busy. Yes. And now I travel quite a bit, apart from pastoring, ministering conferences, and over 100,000 miles a, a year. So I'm quite busy for my yes. 70 years old. And you're looking like you're 25 over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God is good, oh, yeah. isn't he? Now, I know that, you know, I wish we had an hour with you because you have so much to talk about. You've done so many things, seen so many things uh, happen for the kingdom. But we're going to talk a little bit about this season, what we're going through yeah. right now in this season. So, Well, that's what I want to talk about, too. Yeah. So we're on the same page here. So, <laughs> What's so, going on here yeah. in the States and in the world? Uh, I'm here for the second time because of what happened exactly eight months ago. July 14th is when there was a call for God's people to go and read the scriptures in Georgia in 159 counties. It also was done in several states and in several places in the world. Right. And uh, there we began to read the scriptures. And the reason why it was July 14, because of 2 Chronicles 7.14. And that's what, why they were there. To tell God's people, and I'll read it for you, it says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Yes. But the verse before that, 13, says, if I send pestilence mm. among my people. Mm -mm -mm. And I think God heard that desire, those people that went, when I went, I went with my son, and I got there, 7.10, waiting for 7.14 to start. Mm -hmm. There I met the uh, only couple that was there, which was the manager of the station here, and we got to meet and, and uh, get into a relationship, and that's why I'm here. Eight months ago, something was conceived. Okay. And there's a baby about to be born. Mm, Jesus. And... Uh, but we think, we've always thought, revival. God seeks repentance. Mm. And God's ways are not our ways. He says, your thoughts aren't my thoughts. That's right. Just like the heaven is high of the earth, we think, well, maybe we can, God, 
just calls people and gives, talks to them in their dreams and suddenly the churches will be full. Maybe the contrary. God is calling people to go back to their homes and go to basic. Mm. Not uh, church, singing, listening to others, worship God. But go down to basics, what the church always was. Yes. In the living room, in your home, to read your Bible, yes. to meet with God, to repent, to pray, to, to return to a relationship with God. Amen. And uh, I've been, like I said, 12 revivals but, and moves of God, but each one of them have come after a gestation of the worst time that I don't want to go through in my life and the country has gone through. We've gone through terrorism. We've gone through war. We've got through, uh, gone through uh, young people snatched from their homes, from bus stops, killed and thrown from airplanes over the ocean. We've gone through pain. We've gone through financial collapse like you. Probably the depression is the closest this country ever gone to that. Yes, yes. And that is what turns people's hearts towards God. We don't suddenly one day decide, oh, I'm so rich. I have so much going on. I got a car. I got a house. I got things to do. I'm so busy. But I'm going to now give my life to God. It doesn't work that way. And so something is being born. And when something's born, it's bloody, it's messy. My God, yes. That's and that's what's going to happen. You're going to see deaths. You're going to see pain. You're going to see people out of jobs. You're going to see problems. But that's going to turn God's people back to him. Away from complacency and into what God wants them to do. My God, yes. Yes, you're right. So... Um, so you're thinking that this is the punishment from God. So why, 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 God, why is God punishing? Why do you feel like God is punishing? Well, Jesus told us in Matthew 24, he said in his day, the day of his coming, when things are getting ready, all these things are going to happen. Among them are going to be pestilences and all sorts of things. It's very interesting if you want to go to see... Uh, uh, David Wilkerson, in 1974, God showed him a vision, which is like reading the newspaper of all these years yeah. of what was going to happen. And uh, Martin Luther said this. He, he lived in the 1500s during the bubonic plague mm -hmm. that killed over 50 million people My God. in Europe. And that wasn't a big one. There was 500 million in the 13th century. Okay. So... But anyway, he's the father, Martin Luther's the father of the Protestant church, That's which right. all churches That's derive right. from. Yes, yes. And he said, by God's decree, the enemy has sent us poisoned meat. Mm -hmm. So he said, it's God's decree. It's not people, it's not, God has decreed. And uh, my father used to say, he was man of God, he was one that brought revival to Argentina. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he said the viruses are very much like devils. Yes. They don't yes. have life. That's right. They need a host mm -hmm. to live. Mm -hmm. They need right. to be in us to live, in our thoughts, mm -hmm. for, for them to be relevant and That's alive. Right. That's right. And uh, the fact that those viruses, they come and they start working silently. That's what sin does. Yeah. That's what comes in our thoughts. And it begins to gestate. It begins to multiply. It begins to, through our mouth, affect other people. Through our actions, affect other people. Affect our family. Affect our marriage. Affect our children. Affect, and that virus works and works and works and works and works. Mm -hmm. Infecting as many as it can. Yes. And we don't think we're sick. Everything's going all right. Yeah. And then yeah. suddenly, when he's done his devastating job, then... He shows what he really is. Yes, right. And then he comes to destroy us. That's awesome. Destroy our life, that's destroy what, our peace, that's destroy what, our yeah. everything that we have until we're left with nothing. Yeah. And then he just goes on and just repeats the same thing with the others. Because God brings life and the devil brings destruction. You're absolutely yeah. right. I love that. But the so, devil can't do anything unless God allows, allows it. That's right. The decrees. devil can't do a thing unless God just allows Just like in the life of Job. That's right. God had to tell him, okay, but don't touch his life. That's now, right. I don't know how far it's going to go, what God's decree is, but I do know, get ready. 
Yeah. And not only stock up food. <laughs> we better stock up on Jesus. That's what yes, we better sir. stock up on. But okay, so you talked well, you about asked, the devil's if poison. God was, was, was punishing the world. Uh, yes, God is punishing the world, punishing evil. He's always done that. But God's people aren't supposed to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to be a part of the world. That's right. Jesus said, you're not of this world. Mm -hmm. and, and Christians are becoming so complacent, so caught up in the world that it's like, you know, in the old times, they used to uh, spank their kids. Yeah. And if you came to stop it, you got spanked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, if we're in the world, we're going to get it too. <laughs> so he's coming, whatever's evil, if we're in sin and we're living in sin, you, you're not part of God. You're, you're part of the world. Mm -hmm. and, and he's coming to punish the evil in the world. So repent. He said, if you repent, repent. you turn... That's well, right. you come, come on. You know I'm waiting for you. I'm going to protect you. You're going to, you're going to, you know, going to be with me, like in Psalm 91. So, you know, we have to be, uh, you have to be ready to know what's happening. Yes. Not panic. Not be fearful. But just, just follow your heart. God's going to tell you. He's going to draw you. He's going to, hey, wake up. He's going to shake the fathers. He's going to shake the new generation. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening. It's a special year, a, a year that I haven't seen and I've been expecting this time. Mm -hmm. Because God, not over here, all over the world, he's going to awaken young people that are his, his people. He's going to draw them out of their sins, the world, wherever they are, and start a new work. This baby's going to be beautiful. Amen. God is good. Earlier, you talked about the devil's poison. Oh, Talk yeah. about that, the devil's poison. Well, that is the virus I just talked to you about. Yeah. yeah. That, that's the virus and the way it works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it's always been. If you look in people's lives and maybe in our own lives, you see how the devil does it. He puts yeah. a thought. You repeat that thought. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That offends somebody. That brings that offense inside of them. Mm -hmm. Now they're offended and they have to forgive. But... I don't want to forgive. I'm offended. <laughs> and so that virus is inside. It starts growing. It starts multiplying. Then you talk to somebody else. You know what that person tell me? Oh, you got to wish something happens to him because you, you, you said this to me. What do you, how can he? What do you think? <laughs> and there it goes. He spreads it to another. Yeah. And with multimedia, yeah. that becomes viral. Oh, yes. It doesn't yes. reach one person. Yes. Yes. It doesn't reach yes. 10. It reaches wherever your Twitter goes, wherever That's TikTok, right. wherever Instagram, wherever... You it's spread true. it. It's true. And it's, it's the book of Revelations. The book of Revelations yeah, lets Revelations us Revelations and Ezekiel and Daniel. and It's all there. Yeah, it's there. But it's we there. just don't think it applies to us. It'll be maybe some other time, some other generation. No, it's not. So get ready. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so <laughs> sad that, that the world and so many Christians have become just one thing. You're right. Now, you know, we're running all out of time, but I want you to make sure that you tell people how to contact you to get you into your into their conferences and all those things. But how do they get to your church? I don't want you to come to my church. Uh -oh. I want you to come to God's church. Amen. I That's want good. you to go on your knees, get your Bible, go Amen. back to the basics. That's good. That's because good. that's what Psalm 91 that has been a comfort always for everybody in the secret place of the Most High. Seek that place, and he says, a thousand shall fall by your side, 10,000, and it won't harm you. There was a, there was a, a, a man of God, John Lake. Uh, oh, yeah, the John Lake, yeah. The, the mm -hmm. bacteria and viruses would die That's when they right, touched his hand. His hand. And not right. because he got alcohol. Mm -hmm. Because he but had because Jesus. because you're protected. That's you're right. protected. You're protected. That's right. So that, that's my message. Don't panic because uh, it's John said uh, that uh, he says there, the perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Yes, it does. When you begin to panic and be scared and all that, that's fear. Yeah. And love casts that out. And uh, Paul said, uh, he said, uh, the three things remain faith, hope, and love. That's and right. love is the greatest. That's right. Why is that? Because if you have hope, that's empty. Hmm. A lot of people have hope. Yeah. But if you have faith, faith begets hope. If you have faith, then you'll have hope. But to have faith, faith is begotten by love. That's right. So if you love, you will have faith. If you have faith, you won't panic. 
that perfect love, you'll have hope, and you won't Amen. be troubled by well, the virus. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for sharing. It's God is pleasure. good. Listen, guys, the word that he gave is do not fear because God is with you. Now, take his information off the screen. Contact him. He'll be a blessing to your congregation, and you will be a blessing to his. We're going to...